Ah, why hello there. I was just enjoying some delicious Diet Sprite Zero while reading my new issue of Wired Magazine. Boy, they really captured the asymmetry in Stephen Colbert's ears, didn't they? I don't know. I think it would be fun to do, like, fake commercials. Diet Sprite has not paid me anything for endorsing them. Alright, Sean Stallings writes in. He says, does Google Analytics play a part in SERPs? SERPs meaning search engine result pages. To the best of my knowledge, it does not. I'm not going to categorically say we don't use it anywhere in Google, but I was asked this uh, question in uh, Webmaster World Las Vegas last year, and I pledged that the Web Spam team would not use Google Analytics data at all. Now, Web Spam is just a part of quality, and quality is just a part of Google, uh, but Web Spam definitely hasn't used Google Analytics data. To the best of my knowledge, um, other places in Google don't either. Because we want people to just feel comfortable using it and use it. All right, Lynn writes in. She or he says, uh, Dear Mr. Cuts, it's going to be a long weekend. Looking at all the questions asked. Thank you, Lynn. Very sympathetic of you. But I have to. When does Google detect duplicate content and within which range will duplicate be duplicate? Good question. So, um, that's not a simple answer. The short answer is we do a lot of duplicate content detection. It's, it's not like there's one stage where we say, okay, right here is where we detect the duplicates. Rather, it's all the way from the crawl, through the indexing, through the scoring, all the way down until you finally, uh, just milliseconds before you answer things. And there are different types of duplicate content. There's certainly exact duplicate detection. So if one page looks exactly the same as another page, that could be quite helpful. But at the same time, it's, it's not the case that pages are always exactly the same. And so we do also detect uh, near duplicates. And we use a lot of sophisticated logic to do that. So um, in general, if you think you might be having problems, your best guess is probably to make sure that your pages are quite different from each other. Uh, because we do do a lot of different duplicate detection to crawl less um, and to provide better results and more diversity. Okay, Jeff Jones writes in. This is my favorite question so far. Well, there's been a lot of good questions. I really like this one. I'd like to explicitly exclude a few of my sites from the default moderate safe search filtering, but Google seems to be less of a prude than I'd like to prefer. Is there any hope of a tag, attribute, or other snippet to limit a page to unfiltered results, or should I just start putting a few nasty words in the alt tags of blank images? Well, don't do them in blank images. You know, put them in your meta tags. Uh, whenever I was writing the very first version of Safe Search, I noticed that there were a lot of pages which did not tag their, their sites or their pages at all in terms of we are being adult content. So there's a lot of industry groups, there's a lot of industry standards, but uh, at that time, the vast majority of porn pages just sort of ignored those tags. So it wasn't all that big of a win to just go ahead and include that. <clears throat> so, a short answer to your question is, to the best of my knowledge, there is no tag that can just say, I am porn, please exclude me from your safe search. It's wonderful that you're asking about that. Uh, your best bet, I would go with meta tags, because safe search, un unlike a lot of different stuff, actually does look at the raw content of a page, or at least the version that I last saw looks at the raw content of a page. And so if you put it in your meta tags or even in comments, which is something that isn't usually indexed by Google very much at all, uh, we should be able to detect it as porn that way. Don't, don't use blank images. Don't use images that people can't see, though. And then let's finish out with a question from Andre Scholten. He says, sometimes I make a box spiderable by just putting links in the option elements. Normal browsers ignore them and spiders ignore the option. But since Google is using the Mozilla bot, and the bot renders the page before he crawls it, I know that if the Mozilla engine renders the element, he will remove, remove the element from the document object model tree. So in essence, he's saying, can I put links in an option box? You can, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, this is pretty non-standard behavior. It's very rare. Uh, it would definitely make my eyebrows go up if I were to, my eyebrows go up if I were to see it. So. It's better for your users and it's better for search engines if you probably just take those links out, put them somewhere at the bottom of a page or in a sitemap, uh, and then that way we'll be able to crawl right through and we don't have to have hyperlinks or anything like that. 
Alright, I think that's enough questions for now. It's getting toward 11 o'clock, so I'm going to call it a night. It's uh, Sunday, July 30th, so we'll see if we can't knock a few of these out uh, sometime this coming week. Thanks a lot.